All right, next review. Next on the table is going to be the Jackapur 48 volt 100 amp power. This is a rack mount battery. So let's see what it looks like. All right, so because this battery is so big, right? 5.1 kilowatt hours. Um, I wanted a, the first thing to do to connect it and charge it because I want to test capacity on it, right? I have this variable power supply that could put up about 10 amps at the 58 volts that this battery uh, charges to, right? But here's the interesting thing. Let me show you uh the type of info that you get with this little screen that these these batteries get this is uh different than i have ever tested in any of the batteries right this is a, a new level all right so usually to be able to tell where the battery is and the capacity right or in state of charge you have to measure voltage and stuff or you have something like this right just four little dots lights and i don't know it says like it's a 75 percent or between 50 and 75 percent right because it only has four lights and usually that's what you get that's the best that you'll get with uh, any of the batteries that i've dealt with before but this one not this one this one has a screen that gives you way more info there right so if you run through the menus here analog info then you press enter so here we go, pack voltage, 53.86 volts, right? In, although it says I'm, but I think that's in, 9.48 amps. So I'm charging right now this battery at 9.4. And if, yeah, that's, that's what I set my power supply over there, right? So then you go down. So this is pretty cool. I mean, it already is measuring what's going in there. So it's got uh, all the equipment to keep track of what's coming in and coming out. So temperature, okay, so it's supposed to have six temperature sensors, and here is showing the temperature of all of them, which is weird, because, uh, well, no, actually, they're all pretty good, about 11.7, 11.1, so they're all within one degree uh, Celsius of each other. Down here, the other two PCB, temperature 17, um, Oh, this one seems to be a little bit higher. I don't know if it's because I'm charging right now. But yeah, there we go. You can see the all the temperatures inside, which is pretty cool. I mean, it's more info than you really need. But if you wanted to geek out and really look at what's happening inside your battery, this device right here, this interface lets you do that, right? So then you go escape. Uh, oh, let me see. Enter. Temperature cell voltages. So that is pretty cool. Look down temperature okay cell voltages enter there we go all of the cells right this thing should be a 16s pack so 16 individual cells 100 amp hours each and here it tells you cell one cell two cell two and it tells you the voltage right now uh, uh 3.35 3.36 so uh, they're about nominal right now, right? And you can go down 12, 16. There we go, and it repeats. So if you go down, escape, what's down further than that? Cell capacity. This one is pretty interesting. Let's see, enter here. So look at this. State of charge, 55.34, uh, 33, and then it changed to 3.4%. Uh, FCC, I don't know what FCC stands, but I think that's probably like maximum capacity that the cells have. So it's 104.2 amp hours, right? Remaining RM, it's probably remaining um, 57.7 amp hours, which would, that's how they would calculate the 55 percent state of charge this is pretty cool these usually this is what we have to use a separate system to be able to keep track of all of this stuff right uh on our batteries that we build diy or the batteries that you can you can buy and stuff right so this is pretty cool this is a, a new level i don't know what the cc is uh, one let's keep looking down on the uh, manual here 
So cell voltage, you see down, down, down. That's it. So that's uh, escape analog info. Then you go to the BMS status, enter. Uh, status is charging. Uh, down record. So I think this is a record of like if anything, any faults happen or something, it would tell you right here. OVP, yeah, over voltage protection twice. Okay, so since this battery has been put together, maybe they tested it and that's why those remain there. That's a brand new battery, so, but some testing has to have happened, right? Uh, BMS status, let's see. You click enter there, OT, OTP, and OV, OVP. They're all and so probably no. Uh, down UV UVP OC OCP and then failure and they're all no so there we go let me see escape uh, what else is down here para settings enter non-production manufacturer cannot use okay so we don't have access to that Parameter settings, I guess that's what that stands for. System settings, enter, baud rate, 9600. Uh, down, okay, there's not much there. Down, and that's it. I mean, it's only four sections, and the one that's most useful that you're gonna use is gonna be the analog info, which tells you a whole lot of information about the battery. All right, so here's our test. Here's our battery is connected to these two, two kilowatt grid tie inverters. I'm using this to measure the power. It's right now at 97%, right? Uh, 49 volts, 71 amps, 71. So about 75% of the capacity, this one's capable of 100 amps. This one's are pulling 71 amps and it's just going into the grid, right? So we're going to see how much energy we can remove from this battery at this rate. Should should do 100 uh, amp hours, but we'll see. All right, so now it's time to take this apart and see what's inside, see how well it's put together. Let's take this cover off and see the insides. Right, so here is the insides of the battery. It looks pretty good in my opinion. It's again, it's uh, this company has made um, custom boxes and all the bracketry that it would take to put these uh, cells in here and arrange them in a good and secure way, right? Um, they even have uh, this cover here to cover all this wiring that looks a bit messy but i understand why they do this is so they don't have to cut so much wire they just leave everything long and they just put it on this little raceway here and then uh you just cover it and it, and it looks real nice all the cells have these plastic uh pieces trim pieces that separate the cells so they don't chafe they're not touching uh each other so there's very little chance of them yeah touching each other and shorting out right on the back side and on the front side they have this plastic hardware that keeps them isolated uh in the front you can't even touch the the terminals there right which is safe when you're working it's just ultra safe even though it's inside of a box i guess you know it makes sense to put some of the stuff now on the other side the positive on the uh the positive and the negative leads are six American wire gauge, 200 amp Celsius. Um, 
silicon wire. This is really high quality wire. Um, and that is the reason why in the front, where is it? I saw it somewhere where it says recommended cabling to be six gauge. I think it might be in the, uh, in the user manual. And the reason is because, yeah, that's what they're using on the inside, six American wire gauge, right? So this is high quality gauge. Uh, yeah, 100 amps, it's, it's more than enough. Then the positive goes through this, which is just a thin railed uh, DC circuit breaker, right? And these are common. This is the NXB1-125. I think I have some of these that I bought a long time ago for a project. And so, yeah, they, they're thin rail, but they've made a custom little bracket that goes in here and it goes on there. Now the BMS is different than everything that I've seen, but it doesn't seem like just custom. It seems like it's like a modular system because every board is separate, right? So they have the main board here that's got the BMS, it's got the MOSFETs. This is the power section here, and this is the logic to run through all of those little things on the little screen. The screen board is separate. Uh, you can see it there, and it's connected via a cable, right? So that means that this is designed, for maybe third party, someone's designed this in China, and all these bikes are buying them and putting them in their batteries. And you can arrange this in any other way. You could put this closer to the battery and maybe the little screen farther up or something. This is the communication board. And it's the same thing. It's connected via all of these ribbons and all these cables, right? And uh, also the power cable is also remote, right? Uh, where's that one connected? Oh, right here. So on the telecommunication port, that's where this uh, switch goes on there. Or is it? Let me see. So this, yeah, it's yellow. No, it's red. Yeah. Uh, there's another little board on here that's got these uh, MOSFETs in here with the little heatsink and these um, inductors, right? And these might be for pre-charge or it might be for, you know, limiting current uh, at less than 100%, right? So there's some BMSs that are just on or off, right? They're just, there's nothing in between in the middle. This one might be able to do uh, someone in between. And that's maybe if you're connecting a bunch of these batteries together, and so that way there's not a huge inrush, right? And uh, enough to cause problems, right? So this will limit that a bit. Um, other than that, everything else seems really high quality. Again, uh, well designed, well executed. Uh, it's not over engineered, so that way they can offer this product at a decent price, right? So this is selling for about $1,700, but it's 5.12 kilowatt uh, of battery. So that comes out to very, very attractive price, right? Very competitive to what other people are doing in this industry right now with lithium iron phosphate batteries. Of course, these are lithium iron phosphate, the 4,000 cycles of life, right? So these are long, long lasting batteries uh, that come in a rack mountable uh, unit so that they can be installed permanently and some to power, you know, either your home or some other device or machinery in a remote location, something like that, right? So this is, yeah, it does, it's a very good job. It looks good inside, it's well designed in my opinion. Let's put it back together and then get some more use out of it. All right, during the preparation of this video and this tear down here, I saw some reports of people saying that this battery has a kind of an accelerometer or some kind of sensor that when you have the battery on, like in this case, and you lift it up and uh, up to a certain degree here, that the bat then the BMS then gives you a um shuts down and it just gives you a, a a fault mode right um now i saw some videos from the manufacturer said that if that indeed does the case there are two ways to fix that and one way is through the communication port and you know you download an app on your pc and then you connect that in there and then you clear the the uh the fault another one is in case you didn't want to go that route is just to take this cover off 
and then just disconnect, like physically or you know electrically disconnect the BMS. This is the the positive lead to the BMS, and all you have to do is take this uh, this tape off here, and then this is just a little connector. Disconnect that, connect it right back in there. The BMS will reset, and it'll be working again. So there are ways to get around that, but this particular version that I have here doesn't seem to do it. I can't seem to trigger that event here on this one, right? Uh, no matter what I do here, the BMS just stays on um, and doesn't throw any kind of fault uh, that would suggest that would break the, the battery or would render it unusable. So if you run into that problem, just go, you know, to their website to go to see their videos and they have a, they have some videos there that show you how to clear those that fault in there, right? So there we go. Let's put, finish putting this thing back together. So there you go. That is my quick review of the 48 volt rack mountable Jacoper uh, battery, right? Uh, things are getting good with battery in the battery world. At around $330 per kilowatt hour, this is, uh, I think, the first plug and play affordable battery that I've seen in the market. So this is pretty exciting. And they're in stock in a warehouse in the United States. So you don't have to wait. All the downsides of lithium iron phosphate that we've had for the past few years, they kind of seem to be going away. Uh, and I think this is the first exciting product that I personally have seen, right? So there you go. We'll see you guys. Links to that product is in the description below. Uh, we'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.